Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Uh, whenever we are preparing for UGC NET exam, I've seen people doing this mistake that they focus on the really important works but they neglect some lesser known or less important works. But then there are times when UGC NET examination is flooded with questions from such lesser known and not so popular work. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some really important not so famous essays which you must study if you're preparing for UGC NET English Literature exam. The first important uh, writer that we're going to study in this lesson is George Eliot. George Eliot has written this really famous essay called Silly Novels by Lady Novelist. This novel talks about the female writings during her time and she criticizes the female writers who were writing mine and millinery novels. Mine and millinery novels is a term given by George Eliot and uh, such kind of novels according to George Eliot were the ones wherein the plot is very similar. There is a beautiful heroine and she falls in love with a very handsome hound and they marry and they live happily ever after. And George Eliot criticizes such kind of plot because she says that such kind of writings is highly uh, unrealistic. Such kind of literature is not relevant from the point of view of Victorian society because that doesn't happen in Victorian society in the lives of people living during Victorian society. So she criticizes such works. Also, she says that writing such novels undermine the real, real cause of educating a female because during her time only some females were educated and even those females were writing such plots, such highly unrealistic plot. So she said that it is high time that females should not write about such cliche things and should write about something really important so that they also achieve the same position which the male writers have achieved. The second important writer that we are going to talk about is Edmund Burke. Edmund Burke has written two very famous essays. One is Reflections on French Revolution. In this essay, he criticizes the French Revolution and he says that, you know, I don't like the very idea of French Revolution because it is based on abstract ideas. The concept of liberty and justice, all these are very abstract things and we don't need to fight about it. The second important essay written by Edmund Burke is on American taxation. In this essay, he has talked about the condition of America when uh, America was colonized. And uh, this essay is basically a combination of speeches which he gave in front of the British government asking them to think about the American people and to actually free them from the colonial position because that is degrading America. He was someone who supported uh, justice, who supported decolonization and who wanted America to be free. So he supported American revolution in his work on American taxation. The next important writer is Edward Gibbon. Edward Gibbon has written this work called Decline and Fall of Roman Empire. The work Decline and Fall of Roman Empire is in six books. Remember these six books because uh, the question has been asked in net exam that Decline and Fall of Roman Empire is in how many books and the answer is six books. Also remember that this work Decline and Fall of Roman Empire is about the history of ancient Rome and about Christianity and the spread of Christianity uh, and it is due to this work that Edward Gibbon is called as the modern historian of ancient Rome. So he has been given this title modern historian of ancient Rome because he wrote this really beautiful work called Decline and Fall of Roman Empire. The fourth important writer that we are going to talk is Giambattista Vico. Giambattista Vico has written this work, New Science. New Science uh, is a work which talks about history of different civilizations. And you won't believe that this work contains 114 maxims. So this entire work has 114 maxims in it, which is a big thing. Also, this work, New Science, has been asked in net exam in the December 2014, wherein they asked that New Science is a work by, and the answer was Giambattista Vico. He's an Italian uh, writer. And in this work, he talks about two very important things. 
One thing is that he says that according to him, Iliad and Odyssey is not a work by a single writer who is Homer, but rather this is an accumulation of works by different writers. So according to him, Iliad and Odyssey is something which is written by so many writers and the works of those writers have been mixed in order to form a major work which is Iliad and Odyssey, so two major works. Then he also talks about three ages, age of God, age of heroes and age of man. So he talks about the characteristics and features of all these ages. It's not very important to read the entire work but at least read the major ideas that he has discussed in his work. Now let's talk about another major writer. His name is John Calvin and it is because of his beliefs that we have another branch of Christianity known as Calvinism. Now Calvin has written this work called Predestination in Free Will and the ideas that Calvin has mentioned in this work, uh, I actually don't agree with those ideas but then literature is all about celebrating different perspectives and different angles. Let me tell you what he talks about in his book. He says that according to him, uh, all human beings are sent from birth. We all are sent since the time we uh, took birth on this earth. He says that Jesus Christ and God, uh, Jesus Christ is son of God, God and Jesus Christ both believe that they'll choose certain people who will go and will achieve salvation and rest everyone will be condemned. So God sitting in the heaven chooses certain people from the earth which, uh, who would achieve salvation and rest everybody is condemned. And Jesus Christ when comes on earth dies only for the sins of people who are close to God's heart and all the non-believers they are punished severely when Jesus Christ dies. So this is the idea that he gives in his work Predestination and Free Will. Now when I read this work there is this question in my mind that if everything is predetermined then how our actions affect our future because if God has not chosen me for salvation then no matter whatever I do whatever good deeds I do in my lifetime I will never retain salvation so the entire futility of action comes into my mind but then this is what uh, John Calvin has to say about it in his work predestination and free will so do think about it that do you agree with John Calvin or are you on my side saying that no, our actions will determine our future and predestination doesn't exist? Another important essay is written by John Milton and the name of the essay is Areopagitica. In the essay Areopagitica, he actually opposes the licensing act. And uh, for those of you who don't know, let me tell you that in the period when John Milton was writing, government uh, put forward a licensing and censorship act in which he said that anybody who is writing anything uh, that book will not be published unless and until uh, censor board doesn't approve that work and Milton opposed this uh, entire notion of licensing and censor act because he says that that curtails the liberty and of uh, press Nobody will be able to write anything which opposes the government because government ban kar degi and will not allow that thing to be published. Uh, and this work, Aeropegetica, is basically the speech that he gave uh, in front of the parliament of uh, Britain. And in that speech, he talks about several reasons why this censorship act is not beneficial. And he says that number one, koi bhi achhi worthwhile book jo hogi, usse ban kar diya jayega just because it contains certain portions uh, jo itne appropriate nahi hai. Toh, ek puri achhi book ko ban kar denge just because of certain things which are included in that book. Number two, unfairly koi achhi book ko censor kar diya jayega. Ek book bahut achhi hai, ek work bahut achha hai, but just because usme kuch aise ideas hai jo British government ko sahi nahi lagte, usse ek achhi book ko wo log censor kar denge and they will not publish that book. The third reason that he gives is that he says that this process of scrutinizing each and every book is very time consuming. It is not much likha jata hai ek hi time mein pure Britain mein ki aap agar har ek work ko padhoge aur usse approve karoge that will take a lot of time. Number four he says that new ideas will not come up. Because agar har book ko censor kar diya jayega to koi bhi writer naya idea pe book likhne se pehle 10 baar sochega. Because usko lagega mein ek puri book likh dunga but then maybe government will never approve of my work. So he will never write on new topics. As well as he also says that 
the writers who have already written the books will not revise their books, will not revise their ideas because हो सकता है उनका revised edition को censor कर दिया जाए, so new ideas will not come up. So his पूरे work में he has talked about several important things and he has talked about certain things that he finds is important, uh, which is essential to uh, have freedom of press in any country and any culture. The next important writer is Richard Hooker and he has written this wonderful work called Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity. In the work Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity, he talks about the proper governance of churches, how churches should be governed and this book is divided into eight parts. Do remember that this book is divided into eight books because this question was asked in net exam that Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity contains how many books in it. Also, you must remember that this work was written during the time when England uh, distinguished itself from the Holy Roman Empire and the Catholic Church. Basically, England made Catholicism follow Otada and Catholicism and this Holy Roman Church was operating from Rome. And Rome made Pope Bolta tha, wo pure Europe made Wali Bat Mani Jati. Thi. But due to several political conditions, yes. जो रोमन चर्च है इससे इंग्लैंड ने अपने आप को ब्रेक किया और उसने अपना एक चर्च स्टेब्लिश किया जिसे बोला गया एंग्लिकन चर्च चर्च ऑफ इंग्लैंड एंग्लो सैक्सन इफ यू रिमेंबर एंग्लो इज रिलेटेड टू इंग्लैंड सो एंग्लिकन चर्च स्टेब्लिश हुआ एंड इन दिस वर्क लॉज ऑफ एसियास्टिकल पॉलिटी रिचर्ड हुकर इज सपोर्टिंग एंग्लिकन चर्च इन सेइंग दैट यस मोनार्क शुड बी द हेड ऑफ द चर्च बिकॉज होली रोमन एंपायर एंड उनका जो चर्च का सिस्टम था उसके अकॉर्डिंग पोप इज दी हेड ऑफ द चर्च पोप ने जो बोला वो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है किंग जो है वो पोप के अंडर में आता है तो किंग के व्यूज को पोप अपोज कर सकता है बट जब इंग्लैंड ने अपना चर्च स्टेब्लिश किया विच इज कॉल्ड एंग्लिकन चर्च एंग्लिकन चर्च के हिसाब से द मोनार्क ऑफ इंग्लैंड वुड हैव द सुप्रीम अथॉरिटी ऑन द चर्च अथॉरिटीज so in this work laws of ecclesiastical polity richard hooker is appreciating anglican church and saying that yes i totally agree that monarch should be on the top of the church also he talks about this very important thing wherein he says that it is important ki jo church ka governance hai that is based on the book of common prayer book of common prayer was also published in england during that time and in this book of common prayer the major idea was that ki har common man पढ़ सके इट वॉज रिटर्न इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इन नॉट इन लेटिन जो रोमन एम्पायर है उसमें जब भी चर्च बुक्स लिखता था दैट वॉज रिटर्न इन लेटिन बिकॉज दैट वॉज द लैंग्वेज ऑफ रोम ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम बट एंग्लिकन चर्च की लैंग्वेज वॉज इंग्लिश एंड एंग्लिकन चर्च ये मानता था कि हर कॉमन इंसान बुक पढ़ पाए इसलिए जो बुक्स थी चर्च की दे वो रिटर्न इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज last but not the least we'll be talking about one very 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 important work which has been asked in net exam several times uh, the work is by thomas carle and the work is called sartor resartus the title sartor resartus when translated into english means tailor retailored so you can see how the title uh, is related to clothing and if you are thinking about the same then i would like to tell you that yes this book talks about the clothing style so all those who are interested in the fashion industry must go and read this book because this book talks about a famous uh, tailor known as diogenes and this book is a biography of diogenes and autobiography of thomas carle himself The book is divided into three parts. In the first part, he talks about the philosophy of clothes, why clothes are important, what all uh, clothing styles were popular in the past. In the second book, he talks about the autobiography of um, Diogenes, and he says that you know Diogenes was left at the doorstep, and uh, he had to face so many uh, challenges and. Uh, problems in his life in the third book he talked about the clothing styles which are popular during that time the book was written uh, in england and it talks about the clothing styles that were popular in england during that time in the third book he talks about a very very important idea which is called everlasting yes and everlasting no he talks about these two concept everlasting yes and everlasting no it is a must to read from net point of view because several times they have asked this question that 
and what everlasting yes means, what everlasting no means. We talk about all these important things. We talk about all these essays that I've talked in brief in this video. And we talk about many more essays in my audio online course. So if you're interested to prepare for UGC net in a very revolutionary way, then you can go to my website www.arpitakarva.com. You'll find a list of all the writers, all the important essays and all the important topics that I cover in my online course. The links of all the important social media platforms where I post GoNet quiz is given in the description box below. So you can check the description box and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and WhatsApp so that whenever I post a GoNet quiz which helps you in preparing for UGC net, you will be notified. Also, if you like this video, then do subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up and share it with other net aspirants. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature.